Hi everybody, it's Kathy here from Kathy Loves Scrap and today I am playing along with all of the other very talented artists in the Mad About Mini Pads pop for YouTube. All the details can be found in the description box down below and this is the layout that I've created using papers from some mini pads. So I've decided that I would use a Teresa Collins one with He Said She Said and a Kaiser Craft Paper one which I've had for a very, very long time and I am going to start putting into greater use. I have the two photos here of my daughter and my mother on their recent trip to Western Plains uh, Zoo at Dubbo and I'm going to use this uh, background here which is a um, Swiss dot uh, basil cardstock for my framing and for my uh, mounting of the photos and so forth as well as this plain, uh, well it's not very plain, it's got a very soft subtle pattern on it and that is part of what we're allowed to use for our base. The rest we need to use from the mini pads and I am going to show you a simple way of pulling these together into a layout that looks very, very effective. So I uh, always put a one inch border with my cardstock around my layout. I like to see that my layouts are finished and also it provides stability for me to work on. Now this is an open space layout and I just like to add a little bit of um, interest to it. So I'm using um, my spider brush and I'm adding some of this ink to it. I uh, used a squirting bottle just to add some water to the oxide pad and that was allowing me to spread it across the layout. Now most of it gets covered up throughout this process but that's okay, it's in the background. Now the best thing about these papers, and this is something I learned from Scrap Boys when I do their workshop, is that most patterns on these papers will marry to each other when they butt up against each other. So this is why a mini pad will help and be able to be worked as a 12 by 12. I've just cut a tag out of another piece that I've taken out of um, the Kaiser Craft one and I'm using the cropping proper dial tool so that I can uh, put in the fastener to dress the top of that tag. Now I'm going to take out from the Kaiser Craft again, I'm just taking out this scallop edging which I'm going to add into my layout and this little tag here as well I also will be putting in as to one of the clusters. I'm just checking through making sure there's nothing else that I need or want to add to this layout and out of this one here I've got a little journaling card so I'm going to cut uh, that out and use that as part of that cluster that I want down in the bottom of this layout. Now, I'm not really sure how this is all going to go together I'm just working on an idea following a bit of a plan and hopefully it will all come together in the end. So I just marking off the two bits there because it's not exactly uh, 12 by 12 in this space. I've just taken that quarter inch off the top of that one, which was a little bit uneven when I took it out of the book as well. So I'm just putting it in. As you can see, once you marry up those edges, it's pretty hard to see where the join is and it looks like a 12 by 12. And I'm adding in the scallop edge just here to the side because that's going to allow me to help me line up these photos. I, as I said, I have the two photos of my daughter and my mother. They went to um, Dubbo just recently and while they were there, they went to the uh, Western Plains Zoo, um, the Taronga branch of Western Plains Zoo, and they went for a hippopotamus encounter. Now, I do believe that that was done deliberately because they know that hippos are my favourite uh, animal and they took great pleasure in uh, letting me know what they were doing and sending me back the photos and videos at the, of them in count, their encounter which is great so I was able to uh, get these printed and ready for my daughter's album of her trips this year with my mum. So I'm just dressing up this tag here I'm adding in some um, eyelash fringe and that adds some texture to the page because it is quite a flat uh, monochromatic layout uh, but that's okay because that's what I wanted. I, I've used the colours from uh, my mum's shirt, I've used the colours of the um, natural habitat behind and also bring in the greys of the hippo there. So you can see how it has blended in and everything matches in this layout. 
I'm now layering up where I think that cluster is going to sit at the bottom and then off screen I go and I prepare uh, the title and all the other parts that I would like to add to this layout. So I have uh, some vellum leaves here which I've cut out of a very pale green vellum and I'm just going to tuck those in across the top there to sweep out from that little cluster at the top and to be behind this cluster down here at the bottom. I am going, I found a geotag that I previously cut um, and it's in the greens which was great so that I was able to build that up into that top cluster to mark the spot of the hippo encounter and I'm building up that cluster there. With my title I use my Cricut and I have uh, put it with um, a border around it using the Swiss dots. So I have that arrow there pointing to the hippos showing that that's the hippo encounter. Now what I'm doing now is I'm putting in the lines for my journaling. Remember journaling is very important. Don't forget to do your journaling. It tells people all the story behind the photos. So I am actually journaling right onto the page with my own handwriting this time and that's going in and it tells the story that they went for the hippo encounter at, well, at their visit to the zoo and my daughter was very, very happy that she was able to book that session for the both of them. I am also putting over here on this one where it was and when it was because journaling is important for the future, for people to know who's in the photos, where it was and what was happening. So just remember to include some of that into some of your layouts as you work through your photo stashes. Just to finish off this cluster down the bottom, I have a hippo print, which I also cut out from my uh, cutter, uh, from my Cricut. Um, in Design Space, I was able to find a hippo print of a foot, and I thought this was perfect just to build that little cluster at the bottom and fill it out. I didn't want to add flowers. I wanted to keep it a bit, um, bit more simpler than flowers, and that was a perfect addition, I thought, for this cluster at the bottom. I'm still learning how to use these tweezers. Um, yep, reverse tweezers. Still, still trying to master those. All right, so just to finish it off, and I was looking at that layout as you saw just there, that I realized that I'm not happy with it just sitting flush against that uh, framing there. So I'm adding in some faux stitching. It's a simple doodling technique just to uh, finish off your layout, give it a little bit more detail, make it pop off that page. And it also ties in the black that my daughter is wearing in her clothing and is in that um, title in the embellishments down the bottom. By finishing off with the final edition of uh, Pops of Colour, I'm adding the I'm setting up that visual triangle with a sets of three and your page and I will now roam across the page. So here's how it's all come together. I use the mini pads as you can see, all the elements out of the mini pads plus the mini pad paper. It's allowed me to do the title, it's allowed me to do that panel down the side. I was able to cut a tag and all of that came out of a mini pad. I didn't need to cut into another 12 by 12. Don't forget to go and check all of the people who are playing along in the playlist down below. This is my layout. I hope there was something here that was um, a new idea or a reminder for you and that you too will start delving into all those mini pads that we accumulate and have sitting on our shelves. Don't forget that there's a lot of inspiration in the playlist down below. I'm Kathy from Kathy Loves to Scrap. Give me a thumbs up if there's something here that you liked. It lets YouTube know that you want to see more of my content. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you know when my next layout drops. Leave me a comment. I'll get back to you. I really do appreciate the feedback and the time taken to do so. You can find me under all my socials on Kathy Loves to Scrap, including Instagram, where all my layouts end up, even those without a video. Once again, I want to thank you for watching. Happy scrapping. Till next time.